With these supplies and your sublimation equipment, you can create professional looking sublimated canvas panels with a gallery wrap look. Using the technique I've developed makes it so easy. Let me show you how it's done. So I'm going to begin by resizing the photo to fit the canvas panel. The panel measures 8 by 10 and I'll add 0.3 to both the height and the width of that crop. The 0.3 margin will be folded around the canvas panel giving it that professional wrap gallery look. I'll be demonstrating this using Photoshop but you can use your preferred software and this formula to achieve the same result. So here's the photo that I'm going to be using today and you can see it's larger than 8 by 10 so I need to reduce that. So I'm going to select the cropping tool within Photoshop and the settings that I've chosen are width, height and resolution. I've got the dimensions set to 10.3, 8.3 and 300 dpi. So this will give me the best print. So next I need to decide which part of this photo do I want to crop. So I need to just resize this here and I think in this particular shot I'm going to remove where the steps are and just focus on the uh, foliage and the, this part of the ocean. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to click the check mark to accept that crop. And now this photo has been resized to 8.3 by 10.3 and 300 dpi and is ready for me to print. So I will go up to the file, select print, and I'm going to hit print settings. I have gone ahead and set up some presets within the Epson software. So I have the Workforce 7720 and I'll select this one right here. If you're interested in learning how to set, set up these presets, I'll link a video up in the top right hand corner. Then I'm going to hit OK, then I'm going to hit Print, and then we'll see a dialog box come up from Epson. Here it is, so this is my 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, so you can see that that 8.3 gets very close to the margins, and I've got a little bit of room on the 11 side. So this will fit, most printers will be able to print this at these dimensions. You'll also notice that the image has been mirrored and that's what I want. If you don't have a print preset, make sure that you either mirror the image within your software before you send it to the printer or go ahead and select that from the Epson setup page. So this all looks good. So next thing I need to do is just send it off to the printer. So here's the panel I'll be using today. It's an 8x10. I did purchase these off of Amazon and I'll put a link in the description box below. I have seen these at the dollar store on occasion so if you do see them grab them because they are a great deal at the dollar store. So just remove the protective coating that comes over the canvas. And something I didn't do that I should have is taking a lint roller and just clean the top of the canvas and remove any dust or lint that may be on there. And I use the laminate pouches from Scotch and you just need half of the pouch. So what's great about this is if you buy a pack of 25 you basically get 50 pieces. So just cut where the seam is and just cut that in half. They're a little tricky to separate and the way to tell which side goes on the canvas is if it feels slightly rough that's the side that goes to the canvas and the smooth glossy side will face up. Okay, let's talk about how I set up my heat press. So I don't have a uh, pillow big enough for this particular project. 
So I've just taken a towel, folded it in half, and then I purchased some ironing board material from Joann's. So it does have some heat resistant qualities to it. Folded that and just placed it on top of the towel. Then a sheet of paper. Then the most important part is a sheet of parchment paper. Because the laminate will adhere to this, but once it cools, it will remove easily. If you use just paper, it'll stick and just leave a horrible mess. Next is the canvas face up with the laminate rough side down on top of it. Just center it best you can. Then place that on top of the parchment paper. And then finally, another sheet of paper. So now it's been pressed and it will be a little bowed. So to flatten it out, what I like to do is just place a heavy book on top and just let that sit there and cool for a few minutes. So now it's had time to cool and it looks pretty good. And you can see how easily that parchment paper releases from the laminate. Now the laminate will look a little bit cloudy, but once it remelts, that will disappear. So set your parchment aside because you will be using that in a few minutes. So what I've done is I've attached some heat tape to the back of my print so it's sticky side facing me. Then I'm going to take the laminated canvas board, center that on top of my print, And once I've got that all centered, I'll take my parchment paper, lay that on top, and stick the tape to the parchment paper. Now this needs to go face up into the heat press, so you need to turn it over. It's a little bit tricky, but just hold all the pieces, gently turn it over. Put that into the heat press using that same sandwich that we did before. So now I've pressed it again for 120 seconds. It's cooled down. Just remove the parchment paper and you can toss it at this point because it probably have some blowout ink on it. Next I'm going to remove the print from the laminated canvas. And there we go. So you can see that turned out great. And we've got that, um, the ink has spilled over onto the margins, that 0.3 margin of the laminate. So this is how we get that wrapped canvas look. When you fold that back, look how good that looks. So the next step is turning the edges round and attaching them to the back of the canvas. So to do that, I use a quarter inch double sided tape and then I'll finish it up with a roll of masking tape. So what I do is I take the double sided tape as soon as I can find the edge of it here and I will apply that as close to the edge of the canvas as possible and attach that all the way around the canvas. Now this is how I deal with the corners. You want to do it from the back side and trim as close to that point as possible. 
So do that on all four corners. Now I did remove the backing from the double sided tape and then I'm just going to take each edge and fold that over and let that double sided tape hold it in place. Now the laminate is a little bit brittle at this point because it's been reheated a couple of times. So this is kind of a temporary hold. You'll see that it starts popping up here in a few seconds. But it gives me just enough time to place that masking tape all around and give it that finishing touch. So I finish this process up by applying masking tape over all the raw edges and this gives it a nice professional look. So here's the finished panel. How great does that look? It's got a nice glossy finish. I also did another print with a matte laminate and I just love the way this comes out. I hadn't yet perfected the edging technique but from now on I'll use that technique I just demonstrated. So you can get a nice glossy finish or you can get a matte finish. So the matte laminate is a little bit harder to come by and I did have to order this online and I'll put a link in the description below. But the glossy laminate is pretty readily available. I've seen that, you, know, you can get that at any office supply store, Michaels carries it, and I think Walmart does too. So there you go, I hope you like this technique.